Hi, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I'm going to prepare a sea bass for you. That's the main part of this. I'm going to do some other accompaniments with it. I'm going to make a fish stock with it. So, whole sea bass here. It's still got its guts in, its scales. I'm going to gut it, scale it, fillet it, and prep it. So, hopefully, that'll be quite useful. Many people out there might want to see exactly the whole process. It's a lovely, fresh um, bass. I'm going to crack on with it now. Okay, no recipe for the screen, not necessary basic ingredients. I'm just showing you around the fish there, showing you the, the belly hasn't been cut yet, the eyes are nice and sparkly, and the gills, nice pink colour. If they start to go a bit, if they lose their colour, it's not a fresh fish. This is a very useful trick to do. Just tidy up first by removing the fins. Some of the fins are soft, but the ones along the back are very spiky, and there is a bit of toxins in there, it's not poisonous as such, but if you stab your finger with those, you'll, you'll get itchy, probably. So, this is a good bit of housework, first of all, get your fins off. Go on, off you pop. Right now then, scales. I'm doing this in my sink, so you can see. This thing is covered in thousands of them, and this makes a total mess, right? What you do is get a bin bag, put it in there, and do what I'm doing, but you won't be able to see, but you'll know, and you'll be getting the majority of the scales off that way, and then afterwards bring it to your sink and do it. Basically, this took about a good five or six minutes, um, using a bit of editing to speed it up. This video is going to be long, by the way, there's a lot to do. So that is the majority of the scales off. Pretty happy with that. Right, now, clean up. So about 10 minutes later after I've managed getting all the scales around the back of the kettle, etc. They were everywhere and I still didn't get all of them. I still got in trouble. Okay, give it a bit of a wash. Now, okay, I. this is gross. It's horrible. I'm going to gut it, okay? If you really don't want to see this, Stop now and skip on a minute or so, but you're still here. Here we go. So in the belly and down, and what I needed to do was probably go about another inch further up towards its head. I do that again in a minute, but you there's only one way of doing it. Get your hand in there and just pull out everything that's inside there gets out. And that's including the, the stomach. Um, I believe that is a lady because that is the row sack and you got to get out its organs. It's got liver and all sorts of stuff in there. There will be some blood, so give it a very, very thorough rinse. And there you go, you've gutted a fish. Okay, get it pretty well dried off. And now we're going to fillet this thing. Just showing you there where the flesh meets the head, so you want to cut on the angle as close to the head as possible, really, to the bone and repeat on the other side. Most fishmongers will just start filleting it straight away, but I like to get the head off. I think it helps. It helps me anyway. So this bit is optional. A bent, again, a bit gross. Sorry about this. Ugh. Get off. We haven't finished with that head yet. There's more gross things to see. It's going to make a lovely stock. I'm just going to demonstrate to you where the spine is, it's pretty obvious, so what you do when you're filleting, it's the same as when you're doing butchery, you aim to get your knife as close to the bone, so you remove as much flesh as possible. Show a little bit of respect for this animal, it has died, so we can have dinner, so let's not waste any of it. I'm sure it doesn't really care now, but you know. So what I'm doing there, I'm trying to do it with even strokes, running the knife, along the length from the head to the tail as close to the backbone as possible and then once you're inside you can sort of see what you're doing so again try to do long deliberate strokes you can feel where the bone is and then when you get halfway that it will sort of descend down the other side you go past the ribs so you change the angle of your knife 
doing it is the best way to learn. Once you're doing it, it does seem more obvious than sort of watching a tutorial like this. Now, what I'm struggling with there, it's the point where one of the fins was connected. It's a bit tough, so I, I can't get my knife through. So I'll go just like the other side of it. And there we go, and we've virtually filleted one side of this lovely sea bass. Sea bass, by the way, came from Tovis of Bristol. No sponsorships yet, maybe one day. But they're in uh, Stapleton Road in Bem uh, not Bemister, in Bristol, and they're very, very good. All right, so that's why I remove the head. I find it's easier now to do this side. Otherwise, the head changes the angle. And it's just not as easy. So, again, I'm just running my knife as close to the backbone as possible. Deliberate strokes. Well, you can see, can't you, really? I'm going to run into the same problem here. There's that point with the fin connected, so just to give up there. Come the other side of it. There we go. Get off that last bit. Come on. Excellent. I'm not going to waste any of the bone, so that's going to go in a bowl. I'm going to need to wash that thoroughly. I want to get all of the traces of blood off before I start to make the stock later. First of all, the board looks an absolute mess. A quick tidy up. Always good to keep tidy. I think it's a good sign. It means your head is nice and organised. If you've got a messy area, that's the state of your mind. So my old head chef used to say to me. Right then, take off the bit of flank and any other bit of connecting tissue for the, the, the fins. Now we've got to remove the pin bones. I can't remember how many there are, there's sort of five or six, just showing you where they will be. You fill them for your finger. I've got some specialist fish tweezers, but by all means, if you've got a pair of uh, eyebrow ones somewhere in the house, use those. Just if you're going to get in trouble, don't blame me. The little pot of water there helps, but the point is, you get the tweezers, you get a firm grip on them, and you don't yank it out. You, you pull it gently, you add pressure, like squeezing a trigger or something of a gun. Not that I've ever fired a gun, but I've watched the telly, and that's what they say. There we go, so keep going until you think you've got all of them. Quite often there's a couple of ones that have hidden a bit, especially if you've done a very good job of the filleting, and you've got a nice thick piece of flesh. If you've done a bit of a rubbish job of filleting, it's probably easier to find the pin bones. So what I'm going to do now, before I score it, I'm just going to have a final check for scales. Because this is your last chance to get them off. I'm happy. All the scales off. Now scoring, it's mostly for presentation, but it also helps to keep the fish flat when you cook it. Gentle strokes. I'm only just breaking the surface. I'm not cutting into the flesh. All the way along to the tail and there's a tiny little bit at the end which will probably just cut off, there it goes, that can go in with your stock. Now I'm deciding I don't want to cook that as a whole piece because it's a bit big for a pan so cut it into two and then repeat with the other fillet. So now you know how much work goes into the fish you've had in a posh restaurant so when you don't get any bones in your teeth you know how much work they've put into it, that's why it costs a bit more in good restaurants and there you go two fillets cut in half lovely good job Matt okay another extremely gross bit I'm gonna remove the eyes and the gills so again pause and skip forward a minute if you really don't want to see this because it's horrible here we go okay get your knife down the side of the eye can't believe I'm saying this in a video get it underneath the eye try to pop it out and then remove it. If you break the eye, all the, the worst thing that's going to happen is like ink in the pupil that's going to leak. You'll be able to get it all out. The whole point of this is we're going to make stock and the eyes and the gills have got impurities in them. If you really don't want to do this, you don't have to. You can leave them in there, but you might have a slightly cloudy stock, that's all. 
and I'm just being really fussy. I'm showing you like the best way I know how to do it. And if you don't want to do this bit, I think it'll be fine. There's nothing in there that's going to make you poorly. There's no, no poison or anything. It's just not as nice. I think the scissors is probably the best way to get these gills out. Although at some stage I think I'd give up and get the knife in there as well. I'm sure there's fishmongers watching this laughing at how pathetically slow I am at doing this, you know. They'd have done ten fish in the time it's taken me to do one. But it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if you don't get it perfectly right either. Who's going to know? You just do it for yourself, don't you? And then you practice and then you get better. Another tidy up. Okay, there is quite a lot of blood in the head, so we're going to wash that again in a minute. So, whilst the frame, the fish frame and head is soaking in cold water, I'm just going to quickly chop up some mirepoix vegetables. Onion, celery, leek, garlic, I've got some lemon zest. And I've got a little bit of fennel. You don't have to have the fennel. Fennel seeds are very nice, actually. Um, I'm using fennel because I'm doing some braised fennel to go with this. So that's why no finesse is required for this because it's all going to get passed out anyway. This is half the veg. I'm going to use a little bit more veg later on in the reduction again. But I haven't bothered doing your recipe because, you know, it's... It's not really that sort of tutorial. This is how to cut up a fish. I'm only using the zest of the lemon. It gives that lovely citrusy flavour, but without the acidity. And just the tops of the fennel. The rest of that, I say, is going to be braised, served with this. I've got some time and I'm using curly parsley. I like the curly parsley with this stock because what I do is I sit it on top in a minute you'll see and it acts a little bit like a raft wood if you're doing a consomme if anyone's checked out my consomme recipe from a little while ago hello again thanks for coming back all right that has come to the simmer turn it down you do not want this boiling half an hour half an hour is the absolute maximum most of the rule books or law on making stock says 20 to 25 minutes any more you run the risk of it getting slightly cloudy and bitter but i think half an hour is okay you just no more all right so passing through the colander go on get out And then I'm reducing, reduce to the, the concentration that you want. You can taste it as you go. Fish stock will thicken. It has got like whatever it is, collagen that turns into gelatin. I think that's it. For any scientists out there can correct me on that. I've reduced it by about half. I'm very happy with it. I'm passing it through a fine sieve with a bit of muslin cloth. I won't be using all that fish stock, so some of that is in freezer bags in my freezer while I think about other dishes to do with fish stock. Right, finish the sauce. This is going to be a refined sauce. In fact, I'm using shallot, but I'm using leek, celery, garlic and herbs. Sweating those down. Controversial. That is a red wine. Normally you would almost always use white wine with fish. I think sea bass is a particularly flavoursome fish. It can take a bit of red wine. I'm reducing that down by at least half and then I'm adding the same amount of fish stock. And that is going to simmer and reduce and we'll skim it until it's reduced to the consistency you want it to be. It's going to be really concentrated. This is going to end up being enough sauce for maybe four people maximum if you want it to go a bit further don't reduce it as far and you can always use a bit of thickening agent like cornstarch or something to thicken it but there you go that's taken 
I don't know how long that took me actually, I've forgotten now, probably about 45 minutes, got it reduced down nice and slowly. And now it's time to pass it. Like I say this is a really refined, very much like a restaurant style sauce, so I'm not going to serve those bits in it. Feel free to, if you're happy and you've diced up those bits of shallots nice and fine and you want to leave them in your sauce, leave them in there. It's, you know, extra flavour and texture. Now it's still slightly loose, slightly thin, so it will need to reduce a little bit longer. Now we're going to cook the sea bass. Last time I did some salmon, I put oil in the pan. I thought I'd show you a different way of doing it this time. So just pat them dry because they've been in the fridge for a while and they've got a bit of condensation. I'm going to rub olive oil onto the skin. That way I don't need to put any olive oil in the frying pan. Give it a good massage in. Either way is fine. It really doesn't matter. Good seasoning. And the whole point of cooking the skin on fish is to get it nice and crispy like crackling. So you need a medium hot pan. Good, nice bit of sizzle. And yes, of course, it's me. We've got to make it a little bit better so the butter goes in. And also the butter serves a purpose of flavour, but it also helps to boil underneath the skin just to help prevent it from sticking. It's a good trick to stop your fish from sticking that. I just agitate them slightly to make sure they're not sticking on the pan. And then every now and again, I'm using editing here. This took about eight minutes. Just moving them around so they don't stick to each other. But try not to mess around with them too much. I'm only really touching them every few minutes just to see how they're doing. And what you can see there as they're cooking, you can see the colour change comes up the side. We're going to cook them about three quarters or maybe even a bit further on the skin. Then we're going to flip them over and turn the heat almost down. The heat, by the way, now is at about low to medium. All right, that's when, so once they went in, I then turned it down a bit longer. I should have said that, sorry. Okay, I'm happy. Skin is nice and crispy. In fact, it's stunningly crispy, gorgeous. So now turn the heat almost to the very low setting or off completely if there's enough heat in the pan just to finish those cooking whilst you finish off the rest of your ingredients. So I've done some vegetables to go with this. You'll see those in a minute. What I want to do here is I've just decided I've got my oven on low. I'm going to keep those warm in there. I don't want them to overcook, but I also don't want them to go cold. So in they go. Butter. That is Monte au beurre. The whole point of that is adds a little bit of richness, a bit more shine, and a slight bit also helps it to thicken ever so slightly. Just give that a good stir, and we're just about ready to go. Beautiful. Coating the spoon, that is exactly what I was after. Now, if you don't want to use red wine in your sauce, use white wine. You can also finish it with a bit of cream if you like. It's absolutely up to you. I'm just going to faff about here with some really nice garnishes that I made that were in the original video, uh, but it was half an hour long. And, you know, I know how much you love my videos, but I don't think anyone out there wants to watch me cooking for half an hour. So I did everything I could to trim the video down to 20 minutes, but there is a lot to show you. That is cucumber spaghetti, by the way. Perhaps I'll do it in another video when there's more time to show you. And that is the braised fennel. Bit of butter, obviously, and white wine with some garlic and herbs and just braised in the oven until it was nice and soft, gorgeous. So if you've got friends coming over, obviously you want more, but you, this is the point where you just try to put it all together at the same time. I, uh, I double check that I'm giving equal portions on the plate, or a bit more for me. Remember the one you want. And sauce around. That's for Josh. Josh criticized me last time with the sauce. He thought it was boring that I put it in the middle of the plate. So there you go. Josh, a bit of vava voom for you, mate. Hope you enjoy.
And there you go. Pan fried sea bass. It's been gutted, scaled, filleted, stock made, an awful lot to do. I suggest you do as much of that as you want. Get the fishmonger to scale it and gut it for you. Why wouldn't you? But do have a practice at filleting. I think you'll like that. Anyway, thanks for watching Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Hope you like this one. Leave me some comments. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Coming soon. Bye.